Dave here. How are you? Today is the 20th of August 2023. The title image that I've put there is correct as to what we're going to be doing today, but I thought also I'll be using my number seven turner to tidy up this hinge. And before I do, I'm going to sharpen the blade. And I thought, well, you know, this is woodworking. It's all part of it. So if you're interested in watching how I sharpen a blade, I'm going to use the whetstone. I'm also going to, it's a slow, slow speed, slow speed grinder, but it's water. I'm also going to dress the stone with the diamond truing section or tool, whatever it's called, and hit it with a grading stone as well to get it nice and flat. I'll take you through the different parts uh, because a lot of the time people see these in a store and think, oh yeah, that's not too hard. Why are they expensive? Well, this one wasn't expensive because I fixed it. I rescued this one from being thrown away. There's some things I did to true the wheel up and make it turn flat. A lot of these, um, there was a batch, I think, that were kind of up and down. It's not a Tormek. Tormek would be lovely, but I can't afford a Tormek. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to do. I thought you might be interested also to see how much water these stones soak up. So to do that, I'm going to turn the machine on. Away she goes. I'm trying to get the water in there without spilling it everywhere. I'll pour it in the back here. This is a three litre jug. And it's just starting to go on the wheel now. You can see the different color in the wheel. And there's a line that's on there to show you where to fill to. And I don't want to go above that. I trust everyone's been well during the week. We've had a lot of wind here lately. It's been driving me crazy. I'll see if I've got a better view for you to see there. Let's go to Carl Cam, nice and close. You can see the, the water on it. That sitting on it's not really worrying it. The water is soaking up big time. So there's hardly any water in the, in the dish anymore. It's just gone straight into the wheel, very absorbent. It's like a sponge. You can see not much left in there. And the level is going down, but not too bad. All right, I'm going to start dressing it. So it's pretty easy. This is a retainer that stops me lifting this up too far. And on the other end here is a very, very hard piece of something that's going to go across here and true this up. It's held in position by this. I'll go to a side camera. It might be easier for you. There you go. I'll have a quick read. Um, everyone's looking after each other, they're all having chats. Hey Rod, uh, morning, John, Nathaniel, morning, um, John Gibbs, morning, Skip, morning, um, Graham, morning. I could read it over on this side, couldn't I? Anyway, you're all having a great time there. Perfect day for Carl. All right, here we go. I'm just going to hold it up. and let it run across the wheel. Backwards and forwards. Now the Tormek setup has a couple of screws at either side. And it's a little more accurate. I'm using thumb assist. I'll show you the color of the water. That's going to do me. 
I'll turn it off. I'll show you the colour of the water. Have a look down from Kyle Camp. See it down there? It's the same colour as this. And now you can see the pattern on the top there. How this worked was I clamped this down really, really tight so that this can't pull up here. Maybe go to the front camera, it might be easier. So this can't lift up past that stop. All I do now is undo it. See, it moved easy then. And bring it along and take that out. And that is the tool on the end that's very, very hard. I don't know if it's carbide or whether it's diamond or what it is. So now I have that set like that. I'm going to grade the stone. And this is the grading stone. It's got two surfaces. One is coarse. This is a very coarse side. And this is smooth. So it's supposed to go between coarse and smooth. I think smooth is around 1200 grit. The equivalent to. So I'm going to I'm just going to hit this with the smooth and I need to put more water in there. Actually, what I'll do, yeah, I'll still, still use that water that's down there and then I'm going to get rid of that water because it's going to have a lot of kind of loose grit hanging around in it. It's not going to be good for working on the playing blade. I'll put a little bit more water in here first. I told you it soaks up a heap of water. There we go. Nearly that jug's nearly totally empty. All right, here we go. And I'm going to use the, the grading stone. Now, there's no real secret to it. You just hold it on flat. Move it across a bit. So you get equal wear on it. That'll do me. So that, so all it is is a big chunk of, I don't know what, stuff. <laughs> and now you can see the stone looks a whole lot cleaner than it did before. I've got a couple of tiny, tiny lines in there. And I should, I'm going to get rid of them. I won't be slack. I'll do it. The idea is to have no ridges. Come on. Because if you've got a ridge there, it's going to end up creating a ridge or a, the negative of the ridge in your blade. And any little slot on the edge, on the leading edge of your blade, is going to be a spot that's not cutting. I think that's going to do me. Let's have a look. That's very nice. Very nice. All right, all of that dirty water I've got to get rid of. Now, it's a good idea not to get rid of it. Oh, look at it, it's filthy. Um, I'll, I'll switch. It's a good idea with this to, to use a magnet if you can in the bottom to catch metal filings and it's a good idea not to tip it down a sink it's a good idea to put this into a bucket and then tip it outside somewhere of course all of this stuff will sit in the bottom of your s-bend and block it so look away while i pour it down my sink look at the slime in the bottom that's all off the stone And I do that because I access my um, S-Bend really easily. It doesn't worry me. I'll pop this back in. In a minute. Come on. You know, when I... They always go on really easily when you first... When you first pop them in, I think, oh yeah, it's gone on beautiful. Yeah, it's in now. It's in. I'll top her up with new water. And then we'll pull the plane apart. 
I don't know if this is stuff that interests you. If you leave comments, whether, you're, whether it's live or whether after the fact, if you're watching the show you know, a couple of hours later, leave comments as to whether you think I'm doing this right or whether you think I'm doing a total balls up of the whole thing. I'm happy to listen. Turn that on again to pull the water in through. It's just a dirty big sponge. That's the correct height. I'll do a quick read while it's cleaning up. Morning, John. John Lafferty, how are you? Chris, uh, met my new next door neighbors yesterday. He's a builder from Victoria, Australia. There you go. Graham, good to see you there. All right. Now, the trick to getting, well, first of all, we'll pull the plane apart, so I'll come to the front camera. I'm going to move a couple of things down here. I was going to use my bench and my Moxon vise. You saw the picture on the front to do the work that I'm going to do on the hinge. And I've come up with a slightly better idea. So I'm not going to. I'll take all this apart so that it's out of the way. There we go. So I'm not bumping into it while I'm doing this other stuff here. Move that down there. All right. First thing to do, taking this apart. And again, if, you're, if you know all this stuff, that's great. But there's a lot of people who are new to woodwork and they've never seen a hand plane. Or they've seen it, but they've got no idea about what all the parts are called. This is a lever cap. So I'm going to release the lever cap. This guy holds the blade in position in the body of the plane. All right. This is a backing iron. And this is the blade. The blade is the thing we're going to use. Whilst we're here, this is the tote. This is the handle. This guy here, this whole section here is a frog. This is a lateral adjustment lever. The frog is adjustable forwards and backwards. This is the sole of the plane. No, the blade is out, so I can rub my handle over. It's not going to worry. This is the mouth inside here are the cheeks, these guys here, they're the cheeks of the plane. This is your adjustment wheel to raise and lower the, uh, the plane. And it pushes this little lever here, which lives in the back. It's this guy here, that thing. There's a hole there, you can see that. That's what it goes into. So there's a pin goes in that, or a, or a, a um, now let's call it a pin, and it, does this, which moves the blade up and down in the body. That's a very, very quick lesson on, <laughs> on a bench plane. This is a number seven. This is a turner. And if you have a look back through my videos, you'll see I made a display on the wall up there. I've got the whole set. I'm so, so happy. I love that set. I was infected with the bug of collecting these rotten things by Ian Carey. Thank you very much, Ian. You cost me a lot of money. All right. Now, the best thing to do is not use, a, not use the lever cap to undo. I used to do that all the time as an apprentice, but it's seen as sacrilege. So now I've got to find my screwdriver. Now that I've told everyone not to do it, I, I nearly got the square out. I thought I'll use the other square. Bad move. Bad move. Where is my screwdriver, David? Come on. It's the one thing that I haven't got out. Give me a second. I'll see if I can find it out here. I've been working up in the house, which uh, basically has been taking every a lot of the tools from here up there. It's not out there. You stay there, Nessie. All right. Find a screwdriver. There's a couple here. I know where this one. I was looking for my turn at screwdriver, but I couldn't find it. So I'll get this little guy out of the router table. And it's a flat blade. Gotcha. Look at this. All right. A screwdriver. Flat blade screwdriver. We'll undo by just a quarter of a turn is fine. 
Then we slide it down to the end. There's a hole that opens up wider than the blade. See that that's what that hole there's for to be able to put the uh, screw through and then slide it down the back. Now here we have the blade and it doesn't look too bad really. It looks pretty damn fine. But what the... Let's sharpen it again anyway. Now to do that, I need to put the support on, which is this guy here, goes in the back. That's what we were using for the truing tool. Going to raise it up just by spinning this and drop it down about there. We'll see where we're at. Now, it's important. There's two screws here. Um, I'm not going to bring the camera around the back, but there's two screws that are clamping screws. It's important to clamp both of them up tight because when I start putting weight here, what happens if I don't tighten or clamp up on this side, that whole arm is going to do this and it's not going to give me a square end on the end of the blade. Now with a plain blade, it is crucial. I can't stress how important it is to make sure that that's dead square. It's got to be perfect. If not, when you're trying to adjust, that's what your lateral adjustment's for, to try and take that fine little bit out if you've got it slightly wrong. But if you don't, then if it's kind of wonky, you're going to have, the plane will dig in one side and the other side will just be going on for the ride, not doing anything. All right. Now, this guy here is a clamp that holds the blade onto here. The hip bone's connected to the leg bone, all that kind of stuff. And down here as well, I think I've got it. Should be there, some, there it is. It's this guy, this tells me the angle that I want. So these are all little things. I'm gonna work in conjunction with the length off the front here and the height. So I can, I can fine tune, it's like you're driving a manual car, you know, it depends on how quickly you release the clutch and put the accelerator down as to the response you're going to get. How it's gonna be aggressive or, or soft start or what have you. You're probably thinking, you're weird. Well, that's how I think about things. Now the clamp is here. The side of the clamp is supposed to be square. So when I put the blade in with the bevel down, because we're sharpening the bevel, the stone is turning towards me. I'll put the blade in like so, and I'm just going to sit it there. So now this is square to the side of the blade. Tighten a few things up here until it's saying, oh yeah, I've got, I've got that thickness of the blade and it's going to be all okay. I did have one of my chisels in there earlier. All right, give it a nip. Now that should be square. I can check uh, along the side. It's slightly out. Basically, I'm putting the square underneath on the side of the guide. But let me have a look in here like that. Now you can see, I'm going to go to the other camera on the side here because this is where it gets a little bit important. Mm. If I come in closer and down a bit, I think that's going to let you see pretty well what I want to do. I'll tell you what, that's as near as damn it. <laughs> you can fluke it. All right, I'll come down here a little bit. The idea is to get the blade touching the tip of the blade and the back of the bevel. So the, the bevel section, we want, on this particular one, we want a concave area. We don't want to go too much. Different angles can be set, as I say, by lowering this or advancing the blade in the clamp or retracting it. So now we'll go to this thing. This thing has got different angles on it. You can see that. Now, I'm going to set this to possibly around 30 degrees. Um, nah, maybe 25. 25, why not? It could be 24 by the time I finish mucking around with it. All right. Now I've got to remember which way it goes. 
There you go. So the back is touching the stone. And this end, this little guy here, is going to... It works out the angle from the, from the radius. And then you set the angle here and adjust that foot this way. So put it in front of the board over there. So you can see as I move this around, the bottom is going to angle up or across. Watch, I'm going to move it all the way over. See that? Well, I don't want the blade to be like that. See, there's a big gap. So I want it to be back, as I said, around 25 degrees and tighten that up. And then I can sit it on there and advance it towards it and it's touching it. Now it's just, it's, it's, it's spot on. I fluked it. So I've got this tight, I've got this tight, I've got this tight. I'm going to look down here now to see whether or not the stone, the, the blade is touching the stone right the way across. This is not what you expected, really, is it? You're expecting other stuff to be happening here. So I'll move this back again. About there. I think. Give me a second. I'm adjusting the, other, the camera on the other screen while I'm doing this. Actually, I'm going to bring it in really close. So you can see it as it happens. As it happens. There you go. That's going, to be, that's going to be good enough. We'll start off with it like this. Take it off. Turn it on. So that, that's quite nice. Now, I use these two fingers here. There. My thumbs are on the back. It goes to the other camera because I think it's going to be better. There. Okay, two fingers there, and my thumbs are on the back, and they're going to push the blade up. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to pivot without deflecting this bar. See how it's wonking up and down a little bit? That stone and this machine. As I said, I rescued it from a skip bin. But it's fine. I like it. It does the job for me. So then you can take it off and have a little look. So I keep a rag nearby. So I can get a good look at it. That's going really well. I'm very, very happy with that. Uh, there, there you can see the grind I'm getting now. So I'll put it back on, keep going. And it's important you move it across the wheel. And you've got to have equal pressure. This one and this one have got to be the same amount of pressure. And at the back, same thing. Uh, Chris, the bevel when it comes out of the factory is whatever bevel you want it to be. So if you buy a smoothing plane, I think they are around 30 degrees. 25 degrees is a pretty good angle for a, for a hand plane. Check for square. Mm 
Mm. That's a bit awkward. Um, maybe if I do it that way around, that'll work. That's nice. That's coming up really well. So I'll show you here. Turn it around this way so you can see. See that? It's very important to get as close as you can. So I've got a little bit more to do. Put it on the right way, of course. Yeah, so as I was saying before, if this is something that interests you, please leave a comment in the, um, in the comments down the side here. Or if this, the show is over and you've watched the recording, if you could uh, leave a comment in the video comments down the bottom, that'd be fantastic. And again, if you think what I'm doing is good, let me know. If you think what I'm doing is rubbish, let me know. I'll let you know that what I do works for me. <laughs> And uh, if, if watching what I do uh, helps you at all, that's great. Nearly there. It's a little bit more on the right hand side. Just waiting for a gl glisten. That is getting pretty good. The Sorby Pro Edge, if I was using the Sorby Pro Edge, I'd be done by now. <laughs> I'm working away, but it's not as romantic as this, if, if I could say that. This is, this is an old fashioned way, and a lot of people in joinery shops love their. I've also got a workshop down there that Peter Woolworth bought me some aftermarket stuff for it. And I honestly, I haven't even got it out of the box. Life is just so busy. Like this morning we were up at Sparrow and setting up in the wind at Magpie Markets at Lawson for Vicky. She's got two stalls up there. She's selling chess sets and her uh, vodka. And other stuff, you know, a bit of a garage sale stuff as well. And so we had to get all that set up and done and then fly back here and get everything ready for the show. Oh, look, there's just a tiny little bit on the corner. Don't be tempted to just go like that, like David's doing. Don't do that. <laughs> Got it, got it, all done. Okay, there it is. I think you can see I've got right across the end, it's all, all been hit. Now what I do is I take this off and I lower it down to the bottom. There's two, two settings there. Ah, it's not coming off. I normally take it off and then put it back so that the water can drain in again. I'll show you the silicon mat I've got under there as well. I disconnect it. All right, this can go out of the way. I'll put it on the floor. So down here, I have a silica mat, this thing I just got from Kmart, and it collects the water. This was $8. It's got a lip all the way around, so it makes a swimming pool. I will try and do this without spilling water everywhere. No, that's going to spill, so I need to soak that up. 
Got another rag down here. If I had a sponge, it'd work better. And a dry rag, a dry microfiber rags that have been used for all sorts of things don't tend to absorb as well. There you go, it's starting to get wet now, so it's not as hydrophobic. Oh, remember years and years and years ago, I used to do word of the week. I'll come back up to this camera. Word of the week was, was a regular on the show. So I had, I said something in all genuine belief that it was a real word. And Vicky said to me, what, are you on drugs? <laughs> Basically, that's what she said. So uh, I, think, I think it should go in the dictionary. It's a bloody good word. Now, I need you to let me know if you like this word. We were driving along and I saw, I just glanced something out of the corner of my eye. And I said to Vicky, I just saw something in my peripherance. You know, and she said, what? I said, peripherance, my peripheral vision, my peripherance out there, you know. She said, that's not a word. <laughs> I said, it's got to be a word. Peripherance. Look it up in the dictionary. See if it's there or not. I don't think it is. <laughs> Have a look. Anyway, um, that's my word of the week. Peripherance. Feel free to use it and tell people it's a real word. And you know what? Eventually, it may end up being adopted to be used in the English language. So I'll take this out of here now. So that's, I don't use the um, honing wheel that they have. I use, um, what do I use? I use this and where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'm looking desperately now for my strop. Oh, David, you should have got this sorted before you started the show. Let me have a look. See if it's, it may be in one, one of these other drawers. Yes, lucky, lucky, lucky. Okay, here's my strop. I'm going to put on the bench. Move a few things out of the way. Bring the bench back a little bit. Okay. Give that a wipe. Let's drop there. And these guys. Bloody handy bench, isn't it? <laughs> All right, I'll go to the other camera down on here so you can watch, watch how I do that. It's pretty easy. Tilting down. Right. Okay, this is a polish. It's actually known as rouge. So we'll dose this leather strop up with rouge. Like so. Okay. You pull backwards. Don't go forwards. You'll just chop it up. Okay. I'm going at two angles. Now I have been doing this for many years, so I know what 25 degrees is. And we're doing pretty damn fine. I'm just looking along the tip there. Now, let's see if you can see the micro bevel. As I bring it around, we'll get a glisten on the end, hopefully. Mm. It's not not wanting to glisten. All right. 
Now with a plane blade, you're allowed to lift it up a little bit, not a lot. So I'm looking across the back to see, I'm working back to front to where I'm at. You can see it's important to get a polished edge. In the middle there, it doesn't matter if that's not touched. It's just up on the tip. It's got to be polished. And why has it got to be polished? Well, I'll tell you. If it's not polished, it means parts. It's, it's like a serrated edge. See that? I just touched the... And if it's like a serrated edge, that's no good. Because there's going to be little spots in between that aren't going to cut. Go to the fine side. All right, dare I try the paper trick or should we just put it straight back in the plane and not worry? Now, I, I also hand strop. But be careful, because if it's sharp and you get this wrong, you will cut yourself. I was taught how to do this when I was 16 as an apprentice. The tradesmen used oil stones all the time. That's pretty sharp. I'll get a piece of paper and give it a try. The old paper trick. if I have a piece of paper here. You know what, I got all the paper out the other day. Unlucky. Uh, there's a piece of paper over here. Let's see what I can do. Now, if it doesn't work, it's okay. Well, that works. Back over here. I'm happy. It could be a touch sharper, but for today, that's as far as I'm going to go. We'll put the plane back together. Move a couple of things out of the way. How's the time? Half past. Time for viewers project before I put the plane back together. All right. Now this one is from John and John has been doing rebuilding a shed. Now he's got a shed that was falling apart. No, nope, not that one. This one. This is the shed in the backyard of his house that uh, was falling apart. And his son said to him, I want a workshop. I want a decent shed to be able to work in. So John got stuck in, pulled the old cedar thing down that was you know, just about stuffed anyway. It was falling down. Uh, there's the floor frame and he's got a bit of plumbing there. It's a kind of a weird corner, this shed. But anyway, uh, he's moving along and uh, it's looking quite quite nice. Maybe John's going to move out of the house and <laughs> move into the shed down the back. I think everything's there. And this is inside. So that looks pretty fine. So John, thank you very much for sending that in so that we could all have a look. And he, di he did make comment, hmm, um, maybe it's not woodwork. Uh, but that's what he's been up to, and I thought it is. It's, that's fine. Send your projects in, and like John has just done, and I will see if I can get them up on the show for you. Uh, also, last week, I think Julian sent some stuff in, and remember his desk, the desk that he, him and his dad made? Well, the photo that I threw up across the back, which has got all the controls in it, was way too big, and I didn't have enough time to change it around on the show, but I changed it around this morning. So this is the back of the desk. This just shows you how high tech the whole thing is. I think that's terrific. Um, that could be just the different colored LEDs, but I like it. I like it. So that's a very, very nice desk. So Julian and John, thank you very much for sending those in. Now also Peter, who is building the box along with me, he sent some photos in and I'll show you those in a minute as well. 
And again, just moving all this stuff out of the way. Yeah, those silicon mats, they're as cheap as. Like, I've got them, uh, they've got a little lip around the edge. There's no affiliation. Just, they come as a roll. Here you go, I'll show you what they look like in the store. That. They'll be like that on the shelf in the store. Came up. Cheap ass. And it saves your bench from getting water all over it if you're using a grinder, the slow speed grinder if you've got a wet wheel, or if you're doing other stuff as well. All right, putting the plain blade back together. It's a matter of that one into there and up over the top so that the new sharp edge isn't touching the iron, the backing iron. It's just there, and we want to bring it up possibly about two millimeters shy of going past the top. So I just sneak that up. Let's go to Carl Camp, close up. There we go. So I'm just going to sneak that up ever so slowly. I think that's about good. About good. About good is as good as a same peripherence. Okay, now I've got it like that. Screwdriver. Uh, with a screwdriver, you know, it might just seem obvious. Don't hold on to things because this could end up going right through there and that would be painful. Put it down somewhere to do that last nip as you've got to put the pressure on it. All right, there it is. The backing iron has got this bump on it. Now, there's two reasons. One reason is to push down hard against the cutting edge and the other reason is to start the curls of the shavings happening so that they um, nick off out of the way for you. So there's our lateral adjuster and there's the mouth, the frog, there's a couple of screws there if I want to bring the frog backwards to open the mouth. Now why do I want the mouth open more or closed? Open to give good clearance. If I've got some awkward timber, I close the mouth up a little bit so that as the timber is coming up, it doesn't get a chance to splinter from underneath. I don't know if I've said that correctly, but that's how it works. Then this guy goes in here, like so. And you can see the blade moves backwards and forwards with the lateral adjuster. So I tend to put it all in kind of straight, equal on, on both sides, sitting on the frog nicely. Run your fingers like that. And then the lever cap, in it goes. And then make sure when you put it in, I pull it back as well. Don't push down on the blade. There is a little bit of movement there. So I pull it in and I make sure that the lever cap is in the middle and then straight back. That's locked. Next thing to do is to sight it. Come up to this one. And so I'm looking down the length of the body of the plane against a light background. I'm looking down at the bench here. And now I can uh, hit the adjustment wheel. Now clockwise on the adjusting wheel is going to force the blade down in the body, down into the mouth. So I'm going to take it through a little bit until I just see it. I can see it now. So on what's happening now is as I'm sighting down the, the, the sole of the plane, the left hand side, I can see the blade up just a fraction. The right hand side, I can't see the blade, only just. So now that's when I get the lateral adjuster and I push the lateral adjuster towards the side that's sticking out because that will take it down. Remember, it's pivoting. That's looking pretty damn fine. Good. Now that's, that's tuned. That's, that's ready to rock and roll. Okay, now this is the part where this hinge has been bugging me. It's bugging me, man, bugging me. You ever see a mad, or oh, a weep, oh, mad, 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 mad world? You're bugging me, man. You're bugging me. It's full of 
full of unbelievable stars. Uh, anyway, Phil Silvers, just every, so many people. Um, right, now, I've put the hinge together and we've got these knuckles here. And I also have a bow. It's only very sh very small bow. But the back is this hinge is not straight. So I have to make sure that all of these knuckles, the backs of the knuckles, are the same height off the tops of the knuckles on the glued section. This is where it starts to get interesting. Now, I was thinking about putting it in here and putting my Moxon vise on and clamping it in and then just running the plane over the top. Problem being, it's not flat. So then I thought to myself, scrap that idea. How about I do a, a lateral, like a, a horizontal. I do it this way. Instead of, instead of having the timber vertical, I'm going to lay the timber horizontal and I'm going to do it in such a way where I think it might interest you. It might. I'm going to use my bench as a shooting board. So we'll go through it as to how I'm going to do it. I'll move the hinge out of the way. This is all to get it ready to glue it onto the door. And there's a couple of other tricks I'm going to do as well. I'm never happy just doing something the way everyone else does. I could have bought a piano hinge and be done with it, but where's the fun in that? All right, my next thing I'm going to do is I've got a couple of pieces of three millimeter MDF. And I'm going to put them on my bench. I'm going to bring this, this plane around. That's not plane. It's not a plane, it's a camera. David, come on, get with it. Around here and show you what I'm up to. Carl, that's a good idea. Um, being preferential to peripheral, peripherential, a person exhibits this behavior. <laughs> good on you. Good on you, Matthew. <laughs> Matthew. Periverence, that's V E R. This is F. Perif, P E R I F, or P E R I P H E R. But peripherence, maybe, maybe. All right. I'm going to set this, I've set the camera around the other way. Uh, this one. Tip it up a little. There's one dog down there asleep. I don't know where the other one is. So I have these are going to be. Uh, my height adjusters for the width of the distance from the side of my plane up to the blade. So basically, this is going to go against there and it's going to push along, push along. What do you think? So I'm using the plate, the base of this. It's fun. I like it. Now, the next thing I've got to do is get a board. This is the board that's going to be the door. So I'll put that on there in the middle, like so. And now I'm going to get the hinge and I'm going to put it there. You can see, when I go to Carl Cam, you can see why I have to do this. I got just go to the large car cam. Can you see it rocking around? That's not good. Actually, I'll bring this along a little further. Up to about there. So you can see the gap. There's a gap here and a gap here and nothing in the middle. I've got to hold these steady so they don't rock around whilst I'm planing them. So <laughs> that's why I've come up with this idea. I'm going to lock one end to start. I'm going to work to the, to, to the top of the knuckle there. Let's come back to this camera. 
Well, let's see if Carl Cam close up might work better. So I'm going to pull this in tight and I want to make sure that I'm in line with the guide, which is the MDF here. So to do that, I'll use my square. And that's perfect there. Next thing, I've got a dirty big chunk of Jarrah. See this? It's very, very straight. I'm going to put it on top. Come to another camera. Camera three. There. Big chunk of jar. I've got some wide, uh, some deep throat clamps. I'm going to put one on this end. Now remember, I've got no gap there. That's perfect. And also, it's perfectly square in line with the MDF down the bottom there, which is going to be holding on to it. I'll give that a bit of a nip so it's not going to be inclined to move. Now to the far end, and I need to bring this in. See that? If you can't, you got something wrong with your eyes. <laughs> That's huge. That's how much bow there was. And I'm going to bring it in until it touches like that with the square. Get another deep throat clamp from this side. Because I want to try and get over this part as much as I can. Give it just a little touch, not, not too tight yet, and push. And that's holding it. Keep my hand there. I want to check that it, in the middle it's good. And here. And here. That's good. Tighten. Make sure all of these are pushing down onto the board below. Beautiful. There we go. <laughs> Bring this back a bit. And I'll check the first one as well. Check them all. I'm going to give them a tap. Give them a little tap with a block as well, just to shock them in without, without going too hard. Uh, that, and I got some more of these guys over here. Now I'm using, I'm using this wood because it's the same as this stuff. It's the same species. So, so it's not going to bruise it. Beautiful. That one's good too. All good. Oh look, I just found the screwdriver. <laughs> Can you believe it? All right, now I'm going to plane it. I'm going to use it as a shooting plane. It worked. It worked. I love it. So I'm just taking a little bit off at a time. Can you hear it? And there's the individual ones. Individual shavings are coming out. One, two, three, four, five. 
One, two, three, four, five. So I'm missing one still. There, it's this one. I can feel it's still a little bit rough. This And this one's a little bit rough as well. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. A bit rough there. This is so cool. Okay. Done. What do you reckon, Nessie? And now I'm going to go from the other end back that way. I don't know if that's a good idea, but it just seems like a good idea to me. Let's see what happens. Nearly there. So that was the advantage of them being um, rough sawn. Still a bit. Oh, this is nice. I love it. Come back the other way again. Nearly perfect, a little bit more there. Sneak it out just a touch. We got this. Oh, I moved it. Okay. I rolled it. side again. Sorry for having my back to you there. That's good. Now, straight edge. Let's have a look. don't know if I can, I'll have to use this camera. I was going to try and do it with the close-up camera from Carl. But let's have a look with this one. Um, there we go. There's my straight edge. And I've got... Pretty decent result there. The reason it moved just then was because it was pushing onto that knuckle which has got clearance. See that? But the rest of them, as I'm bringing it along, beautiful. Love it! I'm so happy. All right, now I can take this off. And now I know no matter what, my hinge is parallel. So there's another test. The, the last test, we'll do it from the front, with the camera from the front. And then we're just about done, I think. So let's have a look, see if this works. Okay, back. Which way? Well, there, that's fine. Um, I get down here, and all I'm going to do now is push down on the middle. Not like that. <laughs> I stuffed it up totally. Come on. Come on, David. I am so happy. I'm going to do a zoom close in. Give me a second. Have I got a camera there? That one. That one will do it. Bring it back to about 
there. So all I'm going to do now is push down on that. All of these, remember those loose knuckles, are perfect. I love it. Now here's a thing, and it's allowing me to roll all the way, and they're staying perfect. Come back to this other camera. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do also, we're going to have a look at the progress of Peter's job. So uh, do you enjoy this kind of problem solving? It's, I was thinking all sorts of different ways of doing it, but I thought, you know what, how about I use the bench? Uh, because I have it. I don't have a massive um, setup to be able to do this. This was all just using a couple of sheets of MDF I had lying around that I know are straight because I cut them on the table saw. And I just thought I'd do... Th oh, one of the other things I've got to do. I have to mark each join. Um, so I'm going to mark A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D because I'm going to take the pin out of here and I've got some more surprises up my sleeve. This, they're going to blow your mind. <laughs> Why? Why is David doing this? Why doesn't he just go and buy a plastic box? David doesn't want to buy a plastic box. David wants to um, exercise this thing and enjoy the result. This is going to be so nice. So when I take the pin out, because I've got a, some other tricks we're going to do next week, it's still around the pin, or around the hinge. And uh, I think you'll be interested to see that. Okay, so I'm going to show you Peter's progress. So here we have, Peter said to me, Dave, I've got uh, on my box that I'm making, my dovetails were out a little bit. So what can I do? He came up with all sorts of suggestions. I said, he said it was out two millimeters. I said, rip a piece of the same material, two millimeters to nothing. Use a straight edge and your circular saw. And that's the picture of what he's got there. And that's another picture from the side. And then he's glued it in. And it's brought it back in line with the edge of where he had to be. Otherwise, when he shut the lid on the box, he was saying, oh, maybe I'll just shave the side down so it, you, you, you don't see it. But I thought it was going to be terrible. So we went this way. So dress the piece of wood first, rip it with a straight edge, pop that on. And that's what he did. It's glued in, it's perfect. Now, he also doesn't have a rebate cutter with a bearing. He's only got a straight cutter. So what he's got here is he's set up a, a, a support in line with the top of the, the, this is the back of the box, in line with the, the, the back of the box. And that packer is the width of the distance from his edge of the sole plate on his router to the edge of the cutter. On the right hand side where the clamp's pushing onto it a bit, you can see, I think he might have nailed it on. There's a there's a guide. He's nailed a guide on for the for it to uh, push up against and that base also stops the router from rocking around. Remember I had a situation where the router was rocking slightly. And he said, you know, it's a, it's a whole exp new experience doing a climb cut with a router. And of course it is. I warn everyone, it's bloody hard. And I only do it at a shallow depth at a time. Then he's glued the back in. And I reckon that looks pretty decent. I think Peter's having so much fun doing this. And I encourage you, if you haven't started doing this, go back through the videos of this whole course that I'm doing for you and have a look. So he said to me, Dave, I'm sorry I couldn't go long grain. I couldn't fit a full sheet in the car. So I bought a, <laughs> I bought a small piece like this. And uh, there's his corner where he's fitted it in. And I reckon that's just brilliant. I think he's doing a great job with that. What else did I have to show everyone? I'm doing a quick read down the side. Sharpening a plane blade and gave a presentation on planing, plane anatomy. Okay, there you go. Uh, thanks for that, Carl. 
uh, I see. Um, good outcome, Peter. Skip, good presentation, Dave. I reckon. I, well, what he's doing is great. I love, I love this stuff. And I, I encourage you, Peter, make one of these. Don't just go and get a brass piano hinge. I think this is wonderful. I'm, I'll, I'll set it up. I may not, may not even glue the front on yet. I've got, I have to have a think about it. Only, only two hours before the show, I was going to plane this in another way, in the Moxon vise. And I looked at it and I thought, you know, there's got to be a better way. Got to be a better way. And I'm able to hold everything uh, straight because I knew this was straight. That had to be straight if I forced it up again. I was thinking about using blue tape and, and the glue trick, you know, super glue and blue tape and stick it together and try that in the vise. And I was just wondering maybe the, if it's separated while I'm planning, that'd be a problem. Clamp down like that with a big heavy clamp, it's a big heavy beam. Actually, that beam has got a slight dip in it so on purpose. So it, it really pulled down tight in the middle as well. And just tapping it up worked brilliantly. Peter, you've been watching. There you go. A round of applause, Peter. I think you're doing a great job. It's, you have done this box build without buying anything, really, apart from a dovetail cutter. And whilst that's going to be a very hard job for a lot of people to do, it's going to be so much easier to buy a jig and do that with a jig. Um, I know also that Nathan is doing one with half lap joints. And I'll show you a bit of progress on his next week. You have to remind me. And uh, we'll take it from there. Anyway, I think that might do us. I'm going to have a look for the close of the show video. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. Don't forget, check all those links in the video description down the bottom and use them. And especially if you've got an EV, I've got a link down there for a cheap electricity plant if you're in New South Wales, South East Queensland, Victoria and South Australia. Must have a smart meter though. Do it. I'm in credit. After a fortnight with these guys, I'm in credit. There you go. All right, and leave comments. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I shall see you all next week. Bye.